Ah, now what better way is there to spend a Saturday afternoon than lying on the couch watching a feel-good movie with lots of snacks? Ugh, I suppose I better get that. O-M-G, who is this? He's the most gorgeous boy I've ever seen in my life. I stared at him in open-mouthed amazement, but then I saw him gazing back at me and realized I needed to say something. Hey, how may I help you? Hi, I'm Jaden. My mum and I have just moved in next door. Oh, in that case, welcome to the neighborhood. Jaden smiled as he held a box out to me. W was this a g gift for me? Already? I took it from him and blushed out a thanks. I opened the box and saw that it was full of delicious-looking cookies. My mom baked them. She finds that people tend to be far more welcoming when it involves cookies. We chatted for a bit longer. Then he said he had to go and help his mom unpack. Aw, why did this moment have to end already? The next day at school, I couldn't wait to find my bestie Stella and tell her about my drop-dead gorgeous neighbor. But as it happens, she found me at my locker and immediately started gushing about this hot new boy. Hmm, I needed to see how handsome this guy was. My chance came at lunchtime when Stella pointed over at the new boy who was currently being pestered by Anna, this stuck-up girl from class. I squinted my eyes. O-M-G. The hot new boy was none other than Jaden. I watched on as Anna fluttered her eyelashes at him, then flicked her hair behind her back. Ugh. She needed to give the flirting a break. It was so tragic. Suddenly, Jaden saw me, smiled, then hurried over to me. Hi, Laura. Oh boy, am I glad to see you. He leaned in close to my ear and whispered, That girl is kind of freaking me out. Please, can we get out of here? Then to my surprise, he took my hand and led me away. I could see the shocked look on Anna's face, and I couldn't help but smirk back at her. Ha! Huh, take that, Anna. He's holding my hand, not yours. Then after school, Jaden and I walked home together. Turns out, as well as being the hottest guy on the planet, he was also really sweet and funny. <sighs> Back home, I saw Jaden's mom, Cynthia, watering her window box. On seeing us, she waved us over, then insisted on inviting me inside for homemade lemonade. We all got on so well. Looks like I'm going to have a boyfriend soon, one whose mom loves me. <laughs> From then onward, Jaden and I hung out lots. We had lunch together, we went to the library together, and always walked home together. I was pretty sure the girls at school were super jealous especially Anna. One day, during P.E., the teacher told us we were playing dodgeball and assorted us into two teams. Anna, who was on the opposite side, wouldn't quit aiming at me. I tried my best to dodge her throws, but bang! She got me! Now, listen to me. Guys like Jaden don't like ordinary girls like you. He's mine, so quit chasing him. Furious, I yelled. I'm not chasing him! He's already my boyfriend. Um, actually not. Yet I was pretty sure Jaden liked me too. Just you wait. He'll soon tire of you and come running to me. Ugh. Anna was so annoying. I needed to get my frustrations off my chest, so I ranted to Stella about her. Forget Anna. No one likes her anyway. As for Jaden, it's obvious he likes you. He's just new here and probably feels too shy to ask you out. Yeah, you're probably right. He must just be shy. But, ugh, I know Anna won't quit chasing him. Then you should make your relationship with Jaden official. Stella had a point. If Jaden was too shy to ask me out, then maybe I should take the initiative. Then Anna would have no choice but to back off. Ha! Huh. Tonight was the night, so I texted Jaden, I need your help with something. Let's meet at 8 p.m. by the slide in the park. But then he messaged back saying he couldn't meet tonight as he had to help his mom with something. 
Right that moment, my dad arrived home earlier than usual and announced that he was taking me and my sister Megan out for dinner. Ooh, this restaurant looked nice. I walked in alongside Megan and... Huh? What were Jaden and his mom doing here? Then my dad walked over to Cynthia, kissed her on the cheek, and said, Hello, honey. Jaden and I shared astonished looks. Then we peered at the adults for an explanation. Laura, Megan, this is Ms. Green, the lady I told you about. What? I mean, I knew Dad was dating a woman named Ms. Green, but I had no idea she was Jaden's mom. Then, before we knew what was happening, Dad got down on one knee and pulled out this diamond ring and asked her to marry him. And you know what? She said yes! Oh, no. No, 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 no! They can't marry! Because then Jaden will be my brother! Megan looked delighted and hugged them both, while I stared at Jaden in bewilderment. Don't get me wrong, I really want my dad to be happy, but why her? And what about me and Jaden? After that, Cynthia seemed to always be at our house, baking cakes, humming while she dusted and cleaned up, and exchanging gooey looks with my dad. Ew. Then one day, she insisted that Megan and I went wedding dress shopping with her. She tried on this one dress, and yeah, okay, she looked pretty good in it. But when she asked me what I thought about it, I just shook my head and said, well, it's not very flattering, is it? She tried on several more dresses, but I managed to find fault with them all. Then, when I noticed how disheartened she looked, I patted her shoulder and said, Don't worry, Cynthia. You can always postpone the wedding until you find a suitable dress. She looked a bit taken aback, but then she just smiled at me and said, That's okay, Laura. I'm going to go with the first one. Ugh. Anyway, now the dress was chosen, so at least I could go home now, right? Wrong. As on the way home, we passed an arcade. Cynthia led us there and then excitedly challenged me to a game of air hockey. Then I said jokingly, Fine, I'll play, but if you lose, you don't deserve to be my mother. And guess what? She won! Ugh! And worse still, Megan wouldn't quit giving me dirty looks for the comments I'd made. Jeez, I was just joking. What is wrong with you today? I plopped down on the couch and blurted out everything. She'd take my side, right? Um, turns out, no, she wouldn't. What? You and Jaden aren't even official. But Dad loves Cynthia. They both deserve happiness. So stop being a brat about it. Then she stormed off to her room. Ugh, I feel like I'm going crazy. I have huge feelings towards Jaden, and I know he feels the same. So why can't my sister be mature enough to understand that and support me? I needed to vent to someone. Luckily for me, I had Stella. Why does no one care about my feelings? I can't be Jaden's sister. Um, sorry, Lara. I don't know what to say. Suddenly, from the nearby table came a lousy voice. So that's the reason why Jaden has to hang out with you? You're pathetic, Lara. Turns out we were so lost in conversation we didn't notice Anna and her flock sitting at the table behind us. Actually, we've been into each other for ages. It's not our fault our parents made some dumb decision. Anyway, whether we can be together or not, it doesn't change the fact that you bore him so much that he'd choose watching paint dry over being with you. How dare you! She was about to grab my hair, but right at that moment, a hand stopped her. It was Jaden. That afternoon, on our walk home, I finally came clean to Jaden. I like you a lot. I have always been since I first met you. I know you like me too, but you think it'll be awkward because our parents are getting married. Maybe if we just tell- Laura, you're such a sweet girl. And I do like you. 
but just as a sister. What? How could he say that to me? He had to like me, didn't he? Feeling an unexplainable amount of shame and embarrassment, I ran away from him. As I lay on my bed and rubbed my tear-stained eyes, all I could think about was how unfair this was. So, by the time Dad called me down for dinner, and I walked in and saw how happy he looked, my anger got the better of me and I yelled, I hate you, and I hate Cynthia! How dare you try and replace Mum! Then I rushed back to my room. You really upset Dad. You know that, right? I didn't answer. I was also upset, but no one seemed to care about my feelings. Dad said we come first, so if you really feel this strongly about it, then he'll cancel the wedding. To be honest, I'm real mad with you right now. So? What about me? You're so immature and selfish! I didn't understand how my own sister could be so uncaring. So I screamed out. So what? You don't care that mom's being replaced by some fake woman? And what about me? Why does no one care how I feel? Oh my god, Laura, for once, this isn't about you! Megan rolled her eyes at me, then stormed off. Finally, everyone quit going on about the stupid wedding. But why didn't I feel good about this? Cynthia didn't seem to be coming round to our house anymore, and I noticed how Dad's cooking seemed to get worse and worse, until he stopped altogether and just ordered takeout. Meanwhile, Jaden wasn't anywhere to be seen at school. Stella asked around to find out where he was, and turns out he'd left, as he was moving back to his old town. No way! After school, I rushed straight over to his house and barged inside to find him and his mum packing. Are you... moving away? <sighs> yeah. I moved here to settle down and start a new life with Randall, and this house is for Jaden's future. But the wedding's been cancelled, so... I quickly asked Jaden if we could talk outside. My mom's cried so much. Randall's her soulmate, and she can't stay around her if she can't be with him anymore. The most annoying part is that she agrees with him that the kids must come first. So, I hope you're happy now? Oh my god, what have I done? His words were like a stab to my gut. Oh no, this was all my fault. I was so obsessed with Jaden that I didn't stop to think about what was best for everyone else. Without saying another word, I ran back home and burst into the kitchen where Dad was drearily staring into his iced coffee. Dad, you deserve to be happy with Cynthia. So, please go and tell her how you feel before she leaves for good. But it was too late. Cynthia and Jaden had gone. Just kidding! <laughs> Nah. Actually, Dad managed to catch Cynthia just in time, and he told her how much he loves her and can't live without her. So, guess what? Yep, they got married, and now they're both happier than ever. I've learned the hard way that being selfish and inconsiderate of other people's feelings for my own gain just makes everyone miserable, including myself. So, now we're one big happy family. And I suppose having Jaden as a brother isn't actually so bad after all. Hey, it's me, Erin again. I'm here to tell you the concluding part of my story. So I came up with a genius idea to swap boyfriends with my bestie, Jace, and mess things up to make our current boyfriends appreciate us more. Only my plan backfired massively when my boyfriend Zach decided he loved Jace, not me. Standing on Zach's doorstep having him tell me he didn't love me anymore was so humiliating, especially as a bunch of college kids were hanging out nearby and could hear everything. I yelled at him. We've been together for three years. Doesn't that mean anything to you? He replied, I know, and we've had some great times together, but we've grown apart. Besides, I know Jace loves me too. Gee, Zach, she doesn't. It was all part of the plan. Nah, before all that, she told me she was tired of Jay 
and she really loves me, but she couldn't do that to you, or to Jay. What? Unbelievable! I made this plan work for her, but all along, she'd been playing me and my boyfriend. She'd ruined my relationship behind my back and been fake to me all this time? Now she was playing happily ever after with Jay while my boyfriend was pining after her. I stormed out of there, but going home was the last place I wanted to be, so I ended up at the park. I sat there, thinking things through. I couldn't just leave things like this. Both Zack and Jay needed to know about Jace's true face. Fueled by my anger and humiliation, I rushed off to find Jay. Then I told him everything. He looked completely shocked as I told him how the plan backfired, as now Jace has feelings for Zack and was just using him. I expected him to get upset or something, but instead, he just looked angry and shouted at me. Erin, you're such a bad friend. I've always loved Jace, and I know she loves me too. Stop trying to wreck other people's happiness because your own love life sucks. I stood there speechless, then watched as he walked off. O-M-G. That did not go as expected. Is that all people thought of me? That I was some bitter, jealous jerk? All I tried to do was save Jason Jay's relationship. And it worked, didn't it? But now, I didn't know what was going on anymore. Sighing, I realized that I was wrong to confront Jay without talking to Jace first. For all I knew, Zack could have been lying. I mean, the guy was completely delusional. It just hurt so much that he didn't love me anymore. Instead, he loved my best friend. As much as this sucked, I knew I was wrong to blame Jace for this before hearing her out. Maybe Jay was right. I was a bad friend. I wanted to find Jace, but Jay must have got to her first, as she was never in our room anymore. Then, a friend of ours told me Jace had moved back home. OMG, she'd moved out and not even told me. I tried catching up with her after classes, but she avoided me at all costs. Ugh, this sucked. I'd had enough of this. So one day, I stopped her at the classroom door and said, We need to talk. She tried to walk away, so I grabbed her arm. But she replied, There's nothing to talk about. How could she act so flippant when she had everything and I was left with nothing? So I shouted at her, Excuse me, you ruined our plan? Now you have everything. You have your boyfriend back and my boyfriend wants you, not me. Not only do they both now hate me, but you moved out without even telling me. Like an ending for our friendship? I know I didn't handle things that well and I'm sorry for that, but I was hurting, Jace. And you... You've been the worst, so stop being so selfish and fix it up. Everyone was gawping at us, and Jace started blushing. Then she hissed at me. Let's talk about it later. Not here. This only made me angrier, as I knew she had absolutely no intention of actually talking to me. Raging, I yanked back her ponytail. She yelped out. What are you doing? Get off! Then who should appear? But Zack. Ugh! He pulled me off her, then hugged her. Then he shouted at me. When will you grow up and think about your words and behavior? I was shocked. Now he was on her side. Jeez. This guy had ditched me for my best friend. What was he expecting from me? Sunshine and unicorns? Suddenly, Jay appeared and saw Zack hugging Jace. Shocked, he said. What's going on here? Jace, is this real? You and him? So what Aaron said was true all along? Jace moved away from Zack and said, Jay, I'm sorry. It wasn't meant to be like this. He gave a nod of his head, then replied, I trusted you, but it seems like it's not worth it. After that, he left. Jace looked really confused and embarrassed, which... I'm not gonna lie, made me feel a little bit satisfied. Also, Zack was not a fool and got angry about how she'd moved away from him. I left them to their heated discussion and went into class. Good, now her love life was a mess, 
and it was my turn to fix mine. I had to bring Zach back to me on my own. No one could help me now. So one day, at his basketball match with another school's team, I asked the cheerleader team to let me in the rooster mascot suit. It was so stuffy in there, but it'd be worth it, right? I would surprise him by running to hug him and celebrate when the team wins. He would definitely be touched and see that I'm always by his side cheering and watching him. So as planned, I ran down to embrace Zach as he scored the winning shot for the team. I tried to kiss him, but I forgot that I was in the form of a rooster. This made all the audience laugh. Zach tried to run away, but I chased after him and I stumbled. The rooster head fell off and everyone saw me. This time, the laughter and screams were even louder, but I just saw Zach looking at me with embarrassed and disappointed eyes. Talk about humiliating. Worse still, he didn't even help me up, just shook his head, then walked off. At that moment, I just wanted to melt into the ground, but then Jay rushed over and helped me to my feet. Jay drove me home, and he said, Why did you have to embarrass yourself like that? And for a person who doesn't deserve you? I replied, he's my boyfriend. He isn't anymore. I know it hurts like crazy, Aaron. But sometimes, we need to let go of things that no longer belong to us. Don't lose your self-worth for unworthy things. I looked up at him with teary eyes. So, you don't want Jace back? Nah. She's made it pretty clear that she wants him. Not me. And I'm not going to be second best to anyone. Besides, she lied to me. And I'm not about that. I guess you're right. I sighed. It just hurts so much. Aaron, you're a strong girl. You'll get through this. But please promise me one thing, though. No more crazy ideas to try and win him back. I know, I know. I managed a laugh. When I got home, I thought about what Jay said. I guess he had a point. No matter how hard I tried to pull Zach back, he still turned away from me. And the same with Jace. I tried to fix things with her and only ended up making everything worse. Thinking about it, Zach wasn't right for me. He wanted me to change who I was just to fit in with his life better. That wasn't right. I wanted a boyfriend who was proud of being seen with me, not embarrassed. And for Jace, she'd lied to me and then she hadn't even respected me enough to talk to me before moving out. She wasn't a true friend. I knew that now. As the weeks passed, I finally got over everything. About Jace and Zach, I still see them around campus, but we don't talk. I heard they are a couple now, but the boys in the basketball club don't like her very much because she never lets Zach go out after matches with them. She also never dances and cheers happily for their victory. Well. That's not my problem now anyway. Ha! Huh. As for Jay and I, we're getting closer. I guess we bonded over our broken hearts. Also, it turns out we're far more similar than we realized. We started to hang out more, and then yesterday I suggested that we should go to the amusement park. His face was serious for a second, but then we both burst into laughter. I apologized to him for being ridiculous before, and he said, Never mind. I love your positive vibes. I smiled happily and said, Don't worry. This time I won't distract you while you're trying to win me a teddy. Then we both laughed. We're not officially a couple yet, but I can feel something between us. But there's no rush. I'm living in the moment, and it's pretty darn great. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have an amusement park to get to. When I was figuring out what to do next, someone passed by. He was tall and handsome, just like a male character walking straight out of a Japanese manga. But why does it have to be in this embarrassing situation? After what feels like an eternity of bombastic side eyes, he finally got close to me, opened his bag, and pulled out an old pair of shoes. I was dreaming about how he would help me put them on, like in the movies when he coldly tossed the shoes next to me. That should do. Then he just left. Hey, you! Can't you at least help me get out of this? The guy sighed, then turned around to help me. Do you even know who I am? Of course I do, your highness. 
What's with that attitude of yours? The royal family never cared to visit this poor village. Why is your highness troubling herself here? Is that so? Well, if that's the case, I want you to show me around so I know how my people are doing, stranger. The guy seemed surprised at my request, but then put on the sweetest smile. My name's Will, and of course, I can give you a tour. Holy Mother of God, if his judgy look was enough to make you question your self-worth, his smile could make you feel like you're the luckiest girl in the world. But before you can wander around, you need to blend in first. People here don't really like the members of the royalty. Then he gave me some old clothes from his bag. You can go in there. What? Do I look like I belong in there? No one's gonna judge you. Except some chickens, maybe. Hey, I can behead you in one second. I'm just kidding. You're safe in there. This was really the middle of the cornfield. So I had to go in and got changed quick. This Will guy's better not be fooling around. And he did not. He walked me around and told me about the lives of the villagers here. I was shocked to see the houses in such poor conditions. How come I only see women and children here? Where are all the men? Young people, especially men, all went away trying to find jobs. <sighs> the living conditions here are hard. I see. But then, who helps take care of the kids and the elderly? We're all just a big family, so everyone kind of counts on each other to make it through. And you're the only guy around? Actually, I was going to leave too, but then I just didn't have the heart to, so I decided to stay here to take care of everyone. I was shocked to learn about everything. All this time while I was sheltered in my gated castle, attending useless events at the lodge in name of charity, people out here have been struggling. And this guy, Will, has done more for others than I ever did. I was wrong about him. Right then, a piercing voice came shaking the earth beneath my feet. Your Highness! What do you think you're doing? Oh my god, what kind of rocks are you dressed in? Are you trying to harm the princess? Guards, restrain him! No, 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 Grace, I'm fine! Look! The guards finally let go of Will. You can't be out here, princess. You have to return to the lodge ASAP before word gets out. Next thing I knew, I was escorted away. Thank you! I'll return the shoes to you! Man, Grace is always a party pooper. As soon as we got back to the lodge, Grace instantly turned into a talking machine, going on and on about how dangerous it was, how reckless I was. But you know, one of my greatest strengths is selective listening. So I take what she said with a spoon of salt. I mean, a grain of salt. <laughs> <sighs> Everything I just said to you goes in one ear and out the other, doesn't it? Yep, you got that right. <laughs> anyway, I had this idea while cruising around the village. I want to help better the lives of the people there. What else, princess? I'm serious. It's like I finally found my life's purpose as a princess all these years. <sighs> Just don't get yourself into trouble is all I'm asking for. You got it. <laughs> that night, I racked my brain trying to think about how I could help the villagers. Aha! Uh -huh. I'll give them the nicest things in the world, just like how the fairy godmother helped Cinderella. So the next day, I ordered my servants to pack boxes of gifts to deliver to Will and the other villagers. If you could have anything from the royal family, what would you want? I I'm so sorry, princess. I, I don't know what I did wrong. Please don't fire me. Chill out. You're not fired. Just answer me. I, I don't know. Maybe expensive clothes made out of cashmere or mulberry silk would be nice. Right. Pack all the royal gowns then. From blueberry silk, of course. Princess, it, it's mulberry. Yeah, that. What else? Ah, get all my tiaras, too. But that's your tiaras, princess. Nah, I never wear them anyway. Oh, don't forget some royal tableware and tea sets, too. I want my people to have the most enjoyable dining experience. After having the gifts sent over, I also gave the order to build a tea house in the village where people could read and have a cup of tea together. <sighs> it feels so nice to finally be able to do some real charity. In the days following, I still had to resume my charity duties at the lodge, namely helping out with the laundry. But of course, it was just for photos. Feeling exhausted, I decided to get a massage with Liam and Grace afterwards. But who knows, it would tickle so much. <laughs> it's like a thousand feathers poking at my souls. <laughs> Your Highness, are you okay? Looks like you're dying over there. <laughs> Help! <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, after the massage disaster, it was like something clicked among the three of us. We would hang out together and our favorite thing to do was spilling the tea about the royal family. Well, not literally. The queen mustn't know about this. Nah, it's fine. The queen always acts tough and strict, but did you guys know that she's actually scared of the microwave? <laughs> 
Your Highness! I heard some other rumors on the streets, too. A royal member once snatched a scar from a woman and never gave it back just because they liked it so much. Oh, I bet it's Princess Aurora. She's crazy about fashion and all that nonsense. We never get along, though. But just when a maid was putting down a spoon next to me, the butler suddenly flew off the handle. This is the dessert spoon, and that is the teaspoon. How could you not know this? I'm I'm terribly sorry, Princess. Uh, Oh, It's just a spoon. You're excused. Don't worry about it. Agreed. We don't care about those stupid rules. Now, if you could leave us alone. They finally left. Ugh. I wonder if these people ever got bored of themselves being boring. Even though I had fun with Grace and Liam for the past couple of days, I've been longing to get out of the lodge again and explore the grounds. So one time, while Grace was back at the palace running some errands, I immediately took my golden opportunity. I was so excited to see how my people were doing with all the nice things I've sent to them. Oh, I bet they're looking as elegant as the royal family now. Maybe they're busy riding the horses I sent. Oh, actually, they might even be having a tea party now. I can't wait to join them. But when I got there... The village looks the same. And is that the Sovereign's orb they're playing with? No, 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 that's not a toy, and you're holding it upside down. That's when I turned to see, by the river, the woman pounding on the cloves with golden golf clubs from the late king. Just when I was heading towards them, I caught sight of the tea house, full of pigs, horses, and chickens inside. Did they seriously turn my elegant tea house into a barn? I guess animals are having a grand tea party in there. Right then, some woman passing by noticed me. Is that the princess? I can't believe she still has the audacity to show up here. I thought she was different, but she's just like the rest of the royal family. A bunch of useless, ignorant snobs. They don't even know what we need. What's all the use in these luxuries when we can't even afford basic necessities? I felt like reality had smacked me in the face for the first time in my life. Turned out I wasn't helping them at all. Just then, I saw Will nearby. But upon seeing me, he just sighed and turned away to leave. Trust me, all I wanted was to help out. But I just don't know how. You should just go back to your lodge, princess. No, no, no. Let me stay here and live with everyone to understand what my people are going through. That's not possible. You grew up with abundance and wouldn't last a day here. That's why I want to learn so I could really be helpful and give everyone what they need. Please help me, Will. He still seemed hesitant. Just treat me like everyone else here. I promise I'll try my best. Will seemed surprised at how determined I was, and he agreed to give me a chance. I was over the moon and ready to start a new venture. But when I got back to the lodge to pack my things, I was informed that the charity program was over and all of us were to return to the palace the next day. I had to go find Liam. Seeing him reading in the garden, I told him I had some emergency that needed my attention here and asked if he could help cover up for me. I was ready to get on my knees if I needed to when... Sure thing. Just do whatever you need to. But aren't you mad? I know I was supposed to be spending time with you just as the queen wanted me to. You know, the marriage and stuff. Girl, I got your back. Saying that, he got on the phone with my mom. Your Majesty, the princess and I are enjoying our time together so much and wish to be allowed to extend our stays here. And of course, the queen was more than happy to agree. But I knew there was one more obstacle to overcome. Grace! When I told her I needed to live outside the lodge for a while, she immediately opposed the idea. I'm serious, Grace. I know you worry about me, but I am the princess. I'm supposed to help the very people I rule, but I failed to do that so far. And I'm here enjoying my privileges on my people's hard work. What kind of princess am I? Plus, Liam and I don't have feelings for each other anyway. Grace, you gotta help me. After long hours of arguing, Grace finally caved. I was so ecstatic that I jumped over to hug her. Giddy up! Only, life in the village was slightly different from the palace. People here actually grow their own food. Doesn't everyone's food come from the store? (laughs) No, we don't have stores here. Everything comes from the ground. Even my afternoon chocolate shake with two pumps of mocha? Yes, even your chocolate shake with two pumps of mocha. (laughs) In fact, I bet it's even better. I'll make one for you later. Just then, I saw Mrs. Stell struggling to pluck up the carrots, so I came over to help her. Don't you worry, I got this. But, uh, uh, who knew the carrot was holding on to dear ground? Just when I was about to give up, it suddenly came off the ground and ended up flying straight over my head, hitting, well... Um, maybe it's better you go feed the chicken. But when I approached the chicken, I saw an egg on the ground, so I picked it up. The chicken suddenly turned to look at me as if they all spotted their sworn enemy. All that was left to do was, RUN! Not in 
until Will came in and saved the day. Did all the chickens calm themselves down? You seem to know a lot about life here. Of course, I've lived here since the day I was born. Though I don't really know who my parents are. Where are your parents? I'm actually an orphan, being brought up by the people here. They didn't have much, but were raising me with all their hearts. That's why I want to stay here and take care of them, now that they're getting older. I was touched by his story, and realized how nice people could be to each other, against all odds. Let's go fix the roofs. The storm's coming. Is there something you can't do, Mr. Know-it-all? Well, actually, yes. I've been living here for so long, I don't know how to... how to impress a girl. <laughs> Who are you kidding? I bet girls are dying to sweep you off your feet already. Are you? For a second, I found myself lost in the dreamy haze of his eyes. No, no, Mia, you're here to help others, not to fool around. Come on, let's go fix the roofs. Later that day, Will led me to the garden and showed me the traditional way of making chocolate. And just like this, you keep grinding until it becomes a thick paste. I got to try it with Will holding my hand. The two of us were so close together. I could hear my heart pounding against my chest. Is this the rush they all talked about in the fairy tales? When we finished, Will made a fresh batch of hot chocolate and gave me one. When I took a sip, a rich, nutty, and earthy flavor instantly warmed me up inside. Will was right! This is better than any Starbucks I ever had! The following days were the most fun I've had in my entire life. I still found it hard to navigate through the hardships here, but Will was always by my side. And the people here, once I got to know them better, they all started to warm up to me too. Every Friday, the whole village would gather around a bonfire to tell each other the oldest tales. Enough with the nightingale. I want to know when we'll hear the happy ending for the tale of Mir and Will. <laughs> we all know the happy ending is as clear as day already. <laughs> I found my cheeks warming up to the jokes. I wondered what was on his mind as I caught Will blushing also. Everything was like a dream, until one morning Will and the other villagers had to go harvest the crop, and I stayed home to help with some chores. While I was hanging the clothes, I got all shook up by a familiar voice. What do you think you're doing, Mia? Do you know what it's like to be a pampered princess? Well, I do, because my dad's a billionaire, so the high life's mine. Not only did we live in a five-story mansion, but I grew up never having to lift one of my pretty, perfect, delicate fingers. I'm Sophia, and throughout my childhood, I had everything done for me. There was a maid to brush my hair, make my bed, and even do my homework for me. I didn't even have to search my walk-in wardrobe for a daily outfit, as I had my own personal stylist for that. So what? I'm spoiled. But I can't help being so perfect. I'm far too gorgeous to be stuck in a stuffy classroom studying. Not when I could be partying or schmoozing with the stars at swanky cocktail balls. But then, one morning, after a particularly crazy night out, I arrived home with a makeup smudged face and only one shoe. Dad frowned at me, and then he said, Sophia, you can't carry on like this. You're going to college, starting next week. But, Dad... I don't need to go to college. School sucks. Plus, we have enough money to last us several lifetimes. Let's just travel and have fun. But Daddy insisted I couldn't just sleep all day and party all night. Ugh! So, I decided to major in interior design for now. Some of the course was okay. I mean, I liked the pretty fabrics, but I just didn't see the point in being there. So, after a month, I dropped out and planned a long trip away with my besties. But there was one tiny problem, as paying for this trip would cost way more than my allowance could cover. So I had no choice but to don my best puppy eyes look and ask my dad for money. Daddy, please, college just isn't for me. But I really feel that going away for a while will help clear my mind. He snorted. I highly doubt that, Sophia. You're lazy, self-centered, and you rely entirely on everyone to support you. You're 20, for God's sakes, so act like it. I pleaded back. But Daddy, I just want to have some fun with my friends. Then get a job, and spend your own money on whatever you like. But if you carry on behaving this way, then don't expect any more handouts from me. You're lucky that I still haven't kicked you out, Sophia. But soon... What? That's so unreasonable. He was my father. It's his duty to support me. Jeez, 
Did he not love me at all? I was so mad that I shouted, You're just some sad, selfish old man! Then I stormed out of there. I was instructing my maid to pack my suitcases when my mum came in and handed me a bank card, saying it's a secret between us two. Yay! Thanks, mum. Now let the dream voyage begin. Wow, it really was heaven to me, with cocktails in the pool and lazy beach days. Well, at least, that was until my friends said they wanted a day exploring. It was hot and sticky out there, but I didn't want to be left alone, so I reluctantly tagged along. We ended up in this small forest area, and I chose to sit under a parasol while my friends went to take a dip in the nearby waterfall. Because, duh, I wasn't ruining my hair for anyone. I didn't understand how this could be anyone's definition of fun. I just hoped that my friends would hurry back. Then I heard footsteps. I turned around, thinking it was the girls, but instead, there were two men with balaclavas on. Oh no, this couldn't be good. I jumped up to my feet and began to run, but my designer sandals weren't made for swift exits, and soon they caught me. I screamed out as a smelly cloth went over my mouth. After that, the world began to darken around me. I flickered my eyes open. Jeez, it was so sunny. Where were my sunglasses? That's when I heard two voices, and I remembered being kidnapped. I heard the one man say, Got her phone? The other replied, Of course, I don't want to upset the boss. I was so scared that I pretended to still be unconscious. Then suddenly, I heard the sound of the engine starting. I opened my eyes and saw the men driving away. Now, I was all alone in some field. What? Why would anyone kidnap someone, then just leave them in the middle of nowhere? My friends must be so worried about me. I needed to contact them. But how? I had no idea where I was, and no phone. Ugh, I should find a way out of this deserted place first, then borrow someone's phone. The kidnappers had left a bag next to me, which had a bottle of water, some snacks, and some gross-looking sneakers in it. Yuck, but I had no choice but to put them on, as my sandals were now torn. Ew, I would need so many pedicures to recover from this. I took the bag with me and started walking. After what felt like hours of torture, a farmhouse finally came into view. I whooped with joy and knocked on the door, but no one answered. I know trespassing is wrong, but this was an emergency, so I pushed the door open and ventured inside. I was just going to make a quick phone call, then I'd leave. But then, I accidentally stumbled and knocked over a vase. A smashing sound broke the silence. I panicked and was about to run away, but from upstairs, a man came down and shouted, Stop! Thief! Before I could explain, he grabbed my hand and pulled me back. I tried explaining that I wasn't a thief, but he gave me a skeptical look and said, Well, in that case, you can leave once you've paid for my vase. That's a collectible. What? This ugly thing? Ugh! I told him I would as soon as I made a phone call, so he doubtfully passed me his cell. I stared at it. Um, turns out I have never cared to remember any of my friend's numbers. I then thought about calling my parents, but no way. I was mad at Dad, and asking for his help right now only meant accepting defeat. No, never. I told the man I would pay when I got home, but he refused to let me go. After a while of arguing, he forced me to stay and work for him until I paid it off. He even made up an agreement and made me sign it. And what other choice did I have? Yep, I was completely stuck here. This was the worst day of my life. He said his name was Manson, then he showed me where I'd be staying. Um, this had to be a joke. It was a barn, literally. There was an uncomfortable looking bed in there and I could hear horses neighing in the barn next door. Was he kidding me? I was sitting there in despair when my stomach rumbled with hunger, so I barged into the kitchen and ordered Manson to make me some food. But he just pointed at the eggs by the stove and told me to make myself something to eat. Um, sure, I'd definitely do that, 
if I knew how to cook? Manson just sat there smirking while I threw the whole egg into the pan and then spent the next half hour trying to work out how to turn the stove on. In the end, I gave up and returned to my so-called room with an empty stomach. If you think that was bad, well, things soon got a lot worse. At 5 a.m., a noisy rooster woke me up and then started my disastrous days at the farm. I accidentally dropped the bag of seeds onto the floor and got them in my hair, so the chickens chased me around the pen to get to them. I slipped over in the pigsty. Ew! I chipped a nail cleaning out the rabbit hutch. I even fell into horse manure. It was awful. Then on top of it all, Manson was so rude. He just laughed at me struggling with everything. But then one day, it all got too much for me. I was exhausted and felt so dizzy that I stumbled and broke two baskets of eggs. It really hurt so bad, and I was even in tears, thinking Manson would be mad. But instead, he ran over to check on me. Then, he even cooked me a nice meal and told me that I'd been doing a great job, despite the accidents. Whoa, what's with this personality change? So, maybe he wasn't as bad as I thought? Over the next few days, I actually found myself enjoying Manson's company. We sat by the fire pit and watched the sunset. We went horse riding, and I managed not to fall off. And he even taught me how to cook. That's when I realized two things. Firstly, I'd been a brat. I was lazy, selfish, and I took everything for granted. But now I realized that with hard work came reward. And secondly... I realized that I liked Manson. A lot. So I decided to do something nice for him. I gave the barn a makeover. It was just simple things, really. I put a rug down, added some plants, hung up a few pictures and fairy lights. Then I dragged Manson over to have a look. He peered around the barn, then smiled. Sophia, this is so lovely. Then he awkwardly looked down at his feet. Look, I need to tell you something. Um, it's your dad. He hired those men to kidnap you, then paid me to let you stay here. I laughed over that ridiculous joke, but then he continued. Your dad wanted you to change your outlook on life and understand the value of money. He only has your best interest at heart. Wait, was this all just a setup? With teary eyes, I looked straight at Manson and said, I was going to tell you that I have feelings for you, but I suppose you don't feel the same. I need to go. Please tell my father to send someone to pick me up ASAP, unless he's okay with me walking all the way back home without any phone or cash. Then I hurried out of there. He shouted after me, but I ignored him. I was so angry and upset. I continued walking until a car eventually pulled up alongside me. It was our family's driver. He took me home, then I locked myself in my room, refusing to come out. It took a few days for me to calm down enough to go confront my father, and when I did, well, I found myself running into his arms and telling him how sorry I was. He looked so shocked. I finally realized that my dad only did that because he loves me, and he wanted me to see the true values of life. I told him I would resume my studies at college but there was something else I needed to do first. I showed up at Manson's doorstep with some carrots for the horses and a new vase. On seeing him, he grinned, then gave me the biggest hug. Guys, life isn't all about designer clothes and expensive holidays. Sometimes, a stinky farm full of even stinkier animals and a cute guy, well, that can be the best place in the world. As for the future, well... Manson and I are both taking it slow and seeing where it goes. I do have big plans for his farm, though. I'm helping him renovate the barns into holiday cottages so other people can sample the country life, too. A part of me will always be a pampered princess. But as for the other part of me, well, it turns out she can make a mean egg bagel and outrun a pen full of chickens. Don't take life for granted. It doesn't matter how pretty and rich you are. Instead, there's far more to life than just that.
Hi, that's me, Maxine, hiding behind some bushes and spying on a girl. Don't get me wrong, I don't have a crush on her, nor am I a total psychopath. I'm just doing a favor for my mate Damon. But if I'd known how crazy this was all going to get, I'd never have agreed to help him. It all started when Damon fell in love with this girl Sophie. She had this mysterious charm that made him want to talk to her right away. And he did. She didn't even glance at him. She just walked away. Ouch. I didn't like her one bit. She was so stuck up. But Damon didn't give up that easily. He tried all kinds of tricks to get her attention, even waiting for the bus with her, even though he had a car. Nothing worked, though, and this made him miserable. He begged for my help, but I said, No way! Then he said, Aw, oh, come on, Maxine, you're a girl, so just befriend her or something. Maybe you can find out what she likes, her fave foods, music, etc. Then I can try to impress her. Please, I'm begging you. I'll even lend you my Nintendo Switch for a month if you agree. You can't say no to that. He had me at that. I'd do anything to get a Nintendo Switch. Fine, it's a deal, but don't blame me if it doesn't work. So after class that day, I searched for Sophie. She was at the bus stop, and I was about to approach her when suddenly she walked away. I decided to follow her, and on the way, she stopped to help an old lady cross the road. Wow, I was surprised. For someone with such a cold face, she had a pretty warm heart. Hmm, maybe she wasn't so bad after all. After that, she started walking towards the park, and by then it was starting to get dark. What was she doing? She sat down on a bench in a creepy part of the park, almost like she was waiting for someone. I hid behind a bush so she wouldn't see me, but I was totally freaked out. Suddenly, two guys appeared and started talking to her but they didn't seem like her acquaintances. Oh my gosh, she looked panicked. I had to help. I quickly shouted, help, officer, please help. There are two guys bothering us. Obviously there was no officer, but it worked. The two guys ran off and I rushed over to make sure Sophie was okay. She was surprised to see me, but then she hugged me and thanked me for saving her. Her whole body was shaking. She must have been terrified. I walked with her back to our dorm and she told me how she liked to come to the park at night because it was so peaceful. I told her it was clearly dangerous and that she probably shouldn't go alone anymore. Then we exchanged numbers, and after that we became quite close. Close enough. That was a few days later I told her Damon had a big crush on her, and asked if she'd maybe go on a date with him, but she just shook her head and said she wasn't ready. Her eyes looked sad, so I didn't push it any further, Maybe she'd just gone through a bad breakup? I didn't ask her again, but one night I was heading to her dorm for a movie night when I heard two people fighting. It was Sophie and some guy, and she was crying. It looked like the guy was about to hit her, so I ran over and said, Hey, what the heck do you think you're doing? Leave her alone or I'll call the cops. He just laughed at me and said to Sophie, We're not done yet. Then he stormed off. I asked Sophie if she was okay and who that guy was. Then she told me how he was her ex, and that he kept trying to get back together with her, but she wasn't interested. As she told me this, she started to cry and said, Because of him, I've become so scared and anxious. I'm even too scared to sleep at night. I felt so sorry for her, and told her I was here for her, and that she could call me any time. Well, Maybe I shouldn't have said that, because that's exactly what she started doing. Every night she'd call me, and we'd end up chatting until 3 a.m. I was so exhausted, but I wanted to help her. She seemed so anxious all the time. Damon knew we chatted a lot, but he'd stopped asking about Sophie. It seems he'd lost interest and was more worried about me looking like a zombie from The Walking Dead. You seriously need some sleep, Maxine. Leave Sophie be. She's clearly got issues. It's probably best to not get too involved. Easier said than done, though. But that night, I decided not to answer her call. I went to bed early, and when I woke up the next morning, I had about 20 missed calls and 50 texts from her. Oh my gosh! Some of them said she was so lonely and that I'd abandoned her. Then one said, if you don't pick up, then I will end it all. Okay, this was crazy. I immediately called her, but she wouldn't pick up. 
I rushed to her dorm, but nobody answered. I was panicking by then and bashing on the door, screaming, Sophie, open this darn door. But there was still no answer. I was terrified she'd done something bad, so I asked some students to help me bash down the door, and that's when she opened the door. I've never been so happy to see someone alive. I ran over to hug her, but she looked so annoyed. What are you doing here? You're making a scene, she said. What? I was so worried about you. You said you were going to... But she interrupted me and said, You need to get some sleep, Maxine. You seem insane. I couldn't believe it. After all those calls and texts, she was the insane one, not me. I didn't feel like yelling back, so I just left her. I needed some space. She tried to apologize to me over the next few days, but I didn't want to be around her. She even texted me saying if I wouldn't be her friend anymore, then life wasn't worth living. I was so tired of her threats, so I just ignored them. And then things got worse. A few days later, Damon and I were studying together when Sophie called me and said she was in the hospital. She told me that she had a brain tumor and they'd just done a biopsy to see if it was malignant or benign. I couldn't believe it. She asked me if I could pick her up and I said, of course, this was so scary. I told Damon and he just said, I think she's making it up, Maxine. How could she suddenly have a tumor? You guys just had a fight and suddenly she's in the hospital? Come on, think about it. I was shocked. Damon, how could you? You're such a jerk. Then I ran off and arrived at the hospital to find Sophie sitting outside wearing a hospital cap. She said her hair had been shaved off for the biopsy, and I asked to see the scar, but she wouldn't show me. She said she'd get a headache if she took it off. I was just glad that she was okay and gave her a ride home. We made up, and I decided to look after her for the day. She seemed so weak, I couldn't bear to see her suffering— I called Damon to tell him that he owed me an apology and told him about Sophie. And he just said, Oh, wow, okay, sorry, hope she's okay then. But then a few days later, he called me and said, Listen, Maxine, Sophie's a liar. She didn't have a biopsy. I bumped into her earlier and her cap fell off, and she has a full head of hair under there. No way it would grow back that fast. Why would she lie to me? I didn't get it. I needed to know the truth, so after class, I went to her dorm. She opened the door right away, and sure enough, she had all her hair intact. She probably knew Damon had told me, and so hadn't even bothered to keep up the lie. This made me furious. Straight away, I started shouting at her. Honestly, Sophie, what is wrong with you? Why would you pretend to be sick like that? Friends don't do that. Sophie grabbed my hand and said, Maxine, I'm sorry. I was desperate. I only did it because I missed you and wanted you to care about me again. I took it too far, though. Please forgive me. Are you crazy? I screamed. I was worried sick about you. Are you sure there's not something wrong with you? Sophie started grinning in a weird way and said, The only thing wrong with me is that I'm in love with you, Maxine. She wouldn't let go of my hand, and I just stared in shock. Wh what, what did you say? You heard me. I love you. Then she started to manically laugh and said, I've loved you since the day we first met. I knew you were following me, so I pretended to be in danger so you'd come rescue me. Even my ex-boyfriend was fake. He was just one of my friends pretending. Can't you see? I'm willing to do just about anything to get your attention. If that's not love, then what is? This couldn't be happening. I tried to stay as calm as possible and said, Listen, Sophie, I'm flattered. Really, I am. But I'm straight. I see you as just a friend, okay? But Sophie wouldn't give up. She grabbed my hands again and said, How do you know that? You didn't even try to love me yet. Just give me a chance and I'll show you what true love looks like. I tried to let go of her hands, but it was impossible. Sophie grabbed my hands tighter and tighter that it even began to hurt. She looked me in the eyes and, oh my god, it's like I couldn't recognize her anymore. She looked like a crazy person, like a psychopath. Then she began to speak in a really creepy tone. You can't get away from me. You're mine now. I was so scared. 
I needed to get out of here, so I pushed her really hard that she fell on the ground and I ran like a mad woman out of there until I was back in my dorm. Then I called the police, but by the time they reached her dorm, she was gone. I told them what happened and showed them a photo of her, and you won't believe it. Apparently, I wasn't the only girl Sophie had attacked. There were other girls, too. After that night, I was terrified. Everywhere I went, it felt like someone was watching me. Then one evening, after my shift at work, I was walking through the park back to my dorm when I heard someone up ahead. I knew right away it was Sophie, but she wasn't alone. She was with some guys. They spotted me and started heading towards me, but I ran as fast as I could, and luckily the police were just outside the park and went in and arrested them. Sounds like a coincidence, right? Well, it wasn't. Sophie's not the only one who can fool people. I knew Sophie was stalking me, so I told the police, and together we created this plan to catch her, and voila, it worked. Sophie, if you're watching this, I wish you all the best, but let's not meet ever again. That's enough stalking for one lifetime. I blinked open my eyes. Whoa, my head felt dizzy. And, er, why was I covered in scratches? My mind was totally blank. I couldn't remember what happened. The last picture flashing through my mind was a heated argument between me and some guy. Then I stormed off and... And now, here I am, in this gloomy place. I think it's a basement or something? It's cold, and it stinks of damp. Dang it! I cannot remember his face! I knew I needed to get out of here, and fast! I ran to the door and tried opening it, but to no avail. It's locked! I slammed my hands against the door and shouted, Anyone? Help! I could hear footsteps approaching, so ignoring my throbbing palms and burning throat, I banged on the door and screamed out, Open the door! Oh my god! It's him! The guy I'd been arguing with before! He was holding a sandwich and smiling gently at me. Oh, Alice, my puppy, are you awake? I thought you might be hungry. Who are you? You brought me here, didn't you? What do you want? He looked confused, then sadly blurted out, Oh no, honey, you must have memory loss from the accident. It's your Josh here. I'm your boyfriend. I squinted at him. He did look familiar, but what boyfriend? What accident? He showed me the photos on his phone. O-M-G! That was me with him, and we looked so happy together. But why can't I remember anything? I hit my head with my hands in frustration, while Josh just stood there against the wall staring at me and giggling. So maybe this Josh guy was my boyfriend, but that didn't explain why he'd locked me up in this dungeon. This wasn't a normal boyfriend thing to do. I rushed to the door, but he grabbed me in his arms. Let me out! You definitely have some wicked intention going on bringing me here! I scowled. Oh my gosh, Alice, you've been watching too many movies. Do you really not remember anything? I gave him a clearly not look, then folded my arms. I guess the accident was pretty intense. We argued, then you insisted on driving while you were drunk, and then caused a fatal accident. Never mind. I think we shouldn't go in too deep about that right now. It must be traumatizing for you. But that's why I decided to bring you here. So the cops wouldn't arrest you. Wha- wha- what Why couldn't I remember such a horrible thing? But looking at all the wounds on my face and body, maybe everything was exactly like what Josh said. No, n no! I- I- have to- c Confess! I stuttered in tears. Are you crazy? Do you want to go to jail? But, but, Alice, no buts. I'm gonna protect you and keep you safe. This was a lot to process, so in a moment of panic, I found myself agreeing to his crazy plan. Josh said this was an emergency bunker back from his grandfather's time, 
Sure thing. I mean, it sure smelled musty. There's not even a window, just a flickering wall light. It felt like I was in a horror movie. Josh also told me that he'd taken my phone off me so the cops wouldn't be able to trace it and arrest us both. And that's it. Every morning, noon, and night, Josh would bring me food and talk to me about his day. Puppy, I'm home. Puppy? Oh, it sounded cute at first, but I soon became allergic to that word. Hey, puppy, eat this. Puppy this, puppy that. Puppy, puppy, puppy. I was so fed up with the word puppy that at times I actually thought I was nothing more than a pet to him. Then each night, he insisted on rubbing my back so I'd fall asleep more easily. Sounds nice, right? But no, it wasn't. He rubbed it really hard, and when I asked him to stop, he just laughed. Obviously, he wasn't doing it to make me feel better, but regarded it as a pastime. Ugh! And that's not all. A few times, I'd wake up to see him sitting there, staring at me with this gummy grin on his face. Then, when I checked my hair, I saw that he tied loads of these dumb little bows in it. Are you crazy? I'm not a kid! I grumbled while pulling and throwing all those dumb things out of my head. But puppy, they look so cute. Tom always liked them. I glared at him. Didn't bother saying anything anymore. Oh, and FYI, yes, Tom's his old dog's name. Okay, so I didn't need a genius to figure out that something was seriously up with this guy's head. But then, things got weirder. One time, he brought down food for us to eat together. It was fried chicken, and as soon as I smelt it, my eyes sparkled. I was about to take a piece when suddenly he pulled the plate away and took a big bite. I didn't even have time to react. Then he handed me the chicken thigh bone he hadn't finished yet. Help me with the rest, puppy. This part is too hard to gnaw. I rolled my eyes at him and flushed up with anger. Seeing my reaction, he said, What's wrong, puppy? Tom always loved the leftovers. Are you crazy? I screamed. Yo, I'm kidding. Don't you know how to take a joke? He grinned. Kidding? What kind of kidding is that? I've had enough of this. This place was driving me insane. I could hardly sleep at all because I couldn't even distinguish between day and night. Then, when I did close my eyes, I found myself tormented by the serious crime I'd committed. Josh was trying to save me. Yes, but I didn't ask him to do that. I couldn't live like this. I needed to face the truth. I had to turn myself in. The next morning, when Josh brought me breakfast, I told him what I wanted to do. Expectedly, he got mad and glared at me. Alice, why do you want to go to jail so badly? I can't stay here forever. I have to face up to what I've done. But it's so peaceful here with me. Peaceful? Was he being serious? It sure didn't feel peaceful. Instead, I felt like I was playing the role of his pet. I lurched forward, but Josh immediately grabbed me so I couldn't move. I tried squirming my way free, but he was a strong guy. Suddenly, he covered my nose with a handkerchief and my eyes closed. Then everything turned black. I slowly opened my eyes. I was in the same familiar room, but... Bars. I saw bars! Ugh! I was in a cage! Then I kicked something. It was a water bowl. Puppy, you're so naughty. I can't lose you, so I've put you in here. He grinned at me as he handed me a sandwich. I chucked it away, then screamed at him to let me out. Seeing this, he immediately left and returned with a bunch of plush toys and dropped them in the cage. Hope they'll make you happier. Then he tried to stuff the sandwich into my mouth. Furiously, I took a bite and spat it in his face, then sneered while throwing the toys at him. Jeez, some of them even squeaked. Wow, okay. His demeanor changed and his eyes turned scary. If that's what you want, 
Don't blame me later. Things were different after that. Each day, he only gave me a bowl of those gross-smelling biscuits. Then he'd just sit there gawping at me. At first, I refused to eat them. But in the end, I was so exhausted that I gave in. Even though I'm pretty sure they were dog biscuits. Ugh. I realized that resisting him wasn't benefiting me at all. It was only making him act more horrible. That's when a genius plan popped into my head. So the next time when Josh appeared with the biscuits, I smiled sweetly at him and said, Josh, baby, it's been so long since we've been on a date. How about you go and get us a bottle of wine and we can spend some quality time together? His eyes lit up, and of course, he agreed without hesitation. He hurried off to get the wine. Cheers to us! Josh, you're the love of my life, and I'm so grateful to God for bringing you into my life. Please stay with me forever. I flashed a sweet smile and whispered in his ear. Every time he took a sip of wine, I fluttered my eyelashes at him as I refilled his glass. To say I'm a Hollywood actress with an Oscar-worthy performance would be an understatement. Soon, Josh was so drunk he went cross-eyed. He fell to the ground before I even finished pouring him the last glass of wine. Seizing the opportunity, I stepped over him to get out, when suddenly, a hand grabbed my ankle. Oh no, I'm screwed! My heart felt like it was about to jump out of my chest. I immediately turned around, ready to fight him when, well, it turned out he was just dreaming. Phew, thank God. I gently pulled my foot free and immediately dashed out of there. I climbed up the stairs to a living room where I found my phone left on the table. I quickly grabbed it and ran out of that horrible house. My legs trembled and I felt like they might give away beneath me at any second. But somehow, I managed to find the inner strength to keep on running. I couldn't use my phone as it was out of battery and I was too disoriented to figure out where my home was. So. When I stumbled upon a police station, I walked toward it. I took a deep breath. This was a tough decision. I knew I was going to jail, but I couldn't live in creepy Josh's basement forever and be his substitute pet. No thanks. I had to face up to what I'd done. Sir, I'm here to confess. The cop looked confused and told me there hadn't been a fatal accident recently. But then he said I looked familiar, so he looked up my name, and turns out my family had reported me missing. That liar Josh had tricked me. It was all a ruse so he could imprison me. How vile! I charged my phone, and up popped hundreds of messages and voicemails from my worried friends and relatives. This was all so overwhelming. I put my head down for a moment then all the memories gradually surfaced. I'd been in the mall parking lot, and I felt like someone was following me. So I hid in the corner, and that's when Josh appeared. So I asked him, why are you following me? Alice, I love you. Please come back to me. I rolled my eyes and started walking away from him. Go away, weirdo. We're done. Then he grabbed my shoulder. I shook myself free and ran away, when a car came out of nowhere and- Ugh! Yes, of course. Josh was my crazy, controlling stalker ex. So he must have taken advantage of my unconsciousness to take me back to his basement and come up with his bonkers plan. Then to make things even easier for him, I ended up with memory loss. Typical. <sighs> it was a nightmare but thankfully, it's over now. The cops took my statement, and soon after that, my family came to pick me up. They all burst out crying, and we hugged each other tightly. It's taking a while to get back to normal life after all the trauma, but I'm getting there. I do want to vomit whenever I hear anyone say the word puppy. <sighs> However, this didn't stop me from getting my own rescue dog, Lily the Corgi. And I never put bows in her fur. As for Josh, well, he was convicted for false imprisonment and has to stay in jail for four years. 
who's in the cage now? Hmm. Serves you right. Really? You're from Korea? No way. You sound just like a native speaker. Richard jumped up in surprise as I told him I came from South Korea. Yeah, I'm 100% Korean. I answered him giggling. <laughs> I had spent hours every day practicing my English. Guess it has paid off. But that was six years ago already. I'm Jenny, by the way, and I'm Korean. At the time I was 21, I joined an online English speaking club where I first met Richard, who never in a million years did I think I'd fall in love with. But that's exactly what happened. Ever since that very first class, we started talking every day, and the sparks between us were undeniable. He always mentioned how he wished I could be in the Czech Republic with him, and I found myself daydreaming about our future wedding. Okay, so I was getting ahead of myself, but he was just so amazing. After a month of talking nonstop, I realized I was probably going to fail college if I didn't start setting my priorities straight. But all I could think about was him. And whenever we weren't chatting, I was stalking him on social media. And every time I saw him tagged with another girl, I got so jealous. This couldn't be healthy. I mean, I hadn't even met him in real life. But still, we continued to fall for each other. And he even introduced me to his two best friends, Anastasia and Pavel, via video chat. But not as blossoming as my love life, I was failing miserably at college. I'd always been the one who laughed at my lovesick friends, and now I was no better than them. This wasn't right. Something had to change. So even though it was killing me inside to do this, one night before sitting down on my desk to work on my assignment, I just picked up my phone and blocked his WhatsApp, deactivated my Facebook, and all without letting him know. Yep, I full-on ghosted him. It was such a hard decision. Because that night, instead of getting anything done for the assignment, I found myself lying in bed with a tear-soaked pillow. It hurt so much but I had to think about my future. My parents would kill me if I didn't get a good job. I couldn't let them down. Anyway, Pavel messaged me a few days later saying Richard had gone totally crazy and he'd never seen him this upset before. He barely ate anything and would drink all day. He's not much different from a zombie now, but I stayed unfazed. Bet he'd be okay though. He was young and handsome and girls were always after him. He'd get over me soon and I'd get over him, right? If only it were that easy. I missed him every single day. Even though we'd been thousands of miles apart, he somehow always made me feel so safe, like he was right there next to me. What had I done? I'd ruined everything. Ugh. Instead of wasting time overthinking, it'd be better to put all my energy into my studies for now, right? And it worked. When graduation came around, I was the top student in my class and even got accepted on an exchange program in Australia. Without even thinking, I texted Richard to tell him the good news. I apologized for disappearing on him and said it had messed with my mind because I hadn't expected to fall for him so hard. I had just needed some time to finish my studies, but now I was ready to reconnect again. Well, he'd seen my messages, but there was no reply. It felt like someone had punched me in the heart. Hours later, he finally replied and said, Sorry, Jenny. I'll get in touch soon. Now isn't the best time. I couldn't believe the words I was reading. I could actually hear the sound of my heart shattering, but it served me right. I was the one who'd gotten rid of him. He deserved better. But still, I stalked him every day online, and then I realized the only way to solve this would be to fly to the Czech Republic and find him. First, though, I had my exchange program in Australia. I bought a new phone and got a new number for the trip to leave my old one in Korea for my uncle who was always complaining about his outdated phone. Those three months in Australia were awesome, and I got my mind off things for a little. I was ready to start fresh when I got back from the trip, until my uncle told me that someone had texted me on my old phone, but because he didn't know English, he didn't know if it was for me or not. I immediately checked it, and there was a message from Richard that said, Jenny, I'm so sorry for my last message. I miss you so much. Your smile, your eyes, your voice. I hope you can give me another chance. Love, Richard. OMG! Months had passed since he'd sent it, and the worst part of all is that my uncle had read the message, and so it said seen. This was a disaster. Okay, but I had to focus on the positive. He missed me. Maybe it wasn't too late. I tried to call him, but he didn't answer, so I texted him and explained what had happened. He finally replied and said he thought I'd given up on him. I'd never give up on him. We then had a proper phone call. I am still thinking about you all the time. Why didn't you send me a Facebook message? The words tumbled out of my mouth in a rush, as if I was afraid I would lose contact with him again in any sec. Suddenly, he went all quiet. 
and then he told me he'd recently met someone, and that he hoped I'd understand and still want to be friends. I felt devastated. Why was it so hard for us? But in the end, there was no other choice for me. I just wished him well and hung up. All I could do now was move on. It was time to find someone else to date. Clearly, Richard and I weren't meant to be. My heart hurt, but I found a job and threw myself into it, giving it all my attention. Eventually, I got promoted, and after five years, I was able to help my parents pay off their debt. I even moved up to a management position. Of course, during this time, I dated a bit, but I couldn't make any of the relationships last. I just missed Richard all the time. I kept dreaming of us spending Christmas together. It was so frustrating. I mean, it had been five years, and we hadn't spoken at all. Why couldn't I just get over him? I occasionally went on his Facebook page, but all I could see was his profile pic that remained the same for years. I'd unfriended Anastasia and Pavel, too, so I couldn't stalk them either. For all I knew, he could be someone's husband now. Maybe even a dad. And yet, still, I never gave up hope that maybe we'd meet in real life, our paths would cross, and we'd finally get to be together. I couldn't stop thinking about this. And then three weeks before Christmas... I got a new following request on Instagram. I couldn't believe it. It was Pavel. And he was now married to Anastasia. This made me so happy. And he told me they were going on their honeymoon to Korea and hoped to see me. OMG, this was so exciting. I desperately wanted to ask him about Richard, but I was terrified to hear that he had kids or something. Anastasia messaged me too and asked how I was doing. I told her I was still single because I worked all the time. Hey, there was no way I could tell her it was because I was still obsessed with Richard. Anyway, the week flew by, and finally I was at the airport awaiting to meet Pavel and Anastasia in real life. They both looked so sweet, and I gave them the biggest hugs. After hugging them, I noted someone standing behind them. Oh, and gee, was that Richard? What was he doing there? I was so stunned I couldn't move. It, it was really him. Pavel broke the silence by saying, We brought Richard along for you, Jenny. Feel free to hit him, bite him, kick him, or whatever you want to do if, if you think he deserves it. Out of complete shock, I just burst into tears. It had been six long years of total silence, and now here he was, looking at me. I asked myself, could I hug him? But I didn't even get a chance to answer my thought because he ran towards me and picked- I'd just finished my shift and was walking out of the coffee shop to head home when I suddenly heard a voice say, Hi! Are you Catherine Mill? Ugh, what else? I'm exhausted already! I reluctantly turned around to a view that almost made me leap out of my skin. Standing in front of me was a girl with a face exactly like mine. Who... who are you? I stammered. I felt like I was seeing things. She smiled at me and said, I'm Tracy. Is this wallet yours? Oh wow, you found it! I dropped it at the Seattle Mariners baseball game. I never thought I'd see it again. That's right. We met there. Then Tracy took out a cap and put it on. Hang on. That hat seemed so familiar. And so did that smile. Um, are you the one I accidentally bumped into at the stadium? That must have been when I dropped my wallet. I was in such a hurry to get to my seat that I'd gone crashing into Tracy. At the time, she was wearing that cap. So all I saw was her smile. But now seeing her standing here, it was like looking in the mirror. I kept staring at her as she said, Yep, that was me. In fact, I came to find you not just to return your wallet, but because I need a favor. Can we chat for a sec? Um, sure. Let's go back inside the cafe. What favor could she possibly want? Well, I was about to find out. Catherine, I'm just going to say it outright. We have something in common, don't we? I hesitated to speak up, but I knew exactly what she was talking about. She then continued. I mean, look at us. You're basically my doppelganger, which brings me to this favor to ask for. Kathy, I was hoping you'd impersonate me. I'll pay you, of course. I'll pay you a lot. Before I could even reply... Tracy handed me an envelope and showed me a photo of some very posh-looking people. This is my family, she said. Wait, what? Turns out they were royals, or something close to. Her grandfather had been an earl in the UK, and then they'd moved over here to Washington. They're what you'd call an aristocratic family, 
So, yep, mega wealthy. Must be nice, I thought. However, it was suffocating Tracy, and that all of the duties that came with being from a family of nobility drove her crazy. Plus, one other little problem. She was in love with a guy that her family definitely wouldn't approve of, because he came from a normal family. Her parents had arranged for her to marry the son of one of the country's richest CEOs. And so that's what led us to now. She wanted to hire me to pretend to be her, so that she could be with her lover boy without troubles. I was stunned. What if someone finds out? I muttered, and shoved the envelope back into her hands, saying that it was too much money. But Tracy just laughed. Oh, this is just the initial payment. You'll receive so much more. Please, I'm begging you. Think about it. Then she looked at me with proper sadness in her eyes. I really did feel sorry for her, but I needed some time. And it would be better to get my mom's opinion on this first. Ever since I'd been a little girl, I'd always talked things through with her. She was the only family I had, and the only one I could trust and rely on. Mom would know what to do. When I got home, I found my mom waiting for me at the table. We ate dinner together in silence, as I could barely focus. She knew something was up right away. Honey, what happened at work? I hesitated, then handed her the photo of Tracy's family. My mom, as you can guess, was shocked to see how much Tracy looked like me, and so I told her what had gone down earlier. I explained that she offered me a ton of money to impersonate her, but that it felt risky. I'd assumed my mom would be dead set against it, but what she said surprised me. That poor girl. Indeed, how people always say it's not as fun as it looks being too wealthy. But hey, a bit of extra money in your pocket couldn't hurt. I mean, you could use it to pay for your vocal training. And at the same time, you'd help Tracy, so that she can be with her true love. Yeah, becoming a singer had been a lifelong dream of mine. But because of money struggles, I'd had to put that aside. Mom's right. This was my chance. I had to take it. So I called Tracy to seal the deal. She was over the moon about it. And we arranged to meet the next day to start preparing. I thought I'd just have to learn all of her favorite things and maybe borrow some of her clothes so that I didn't get caught out. But no, there was a whole lot more to it than that. For starters... I had to take etiquette classes. Can you even believe? That first day, I had lessons on how to walk properly. They legitimately did put books on my head to improve my posture. And then came the elocution lessons to teach me how to speak more clearly. Seriously, was this princess diaries or what? But the best part, though, was her wardrobe. Wow, her outfits were to die for. Now that's what gave me the urge to dive into the royal life now. Everything was going well until we sat down to go through all of her likes and dislikes. Her dislikes were about a mile long. Oh man, Tracy was one fussy girl. I mean, who didn't like pizza? I basically lived off the stuff. Plus, she was vegan, gluten-free, and had a nut allergy. What did she even eat? But despite that, we got through the week. Every morning I had my etiquette classes, which now were easy peasy. I could totally pull it off as a high society girl. And then in the afternoons, I hung with Tracy and learned everything I could about her. By the end of the week, we got all things set and ready for the swap. So Tracy and I went out to celebrate. Catherine, look at our faces, she said while squinting her eyes. I took a closer look at the phone screen, and gotta admit, despite being pretty identical, there were still some differences between us. Sure, her cheekbones were more prominent, and her nose was slightly upturned, but with a bit of makeup, I could fix that, right? Tracy wasn't convinced, though. Listen, I think you're going to need to get plastic surgery. Wait, I wasn't ready for any of that, but on second thought, I guess that would be alright as it'd only make me prettier, which would totally help with my singing career. So I went under the knife. Not only my nose and cheekbones were fixed, but they also added a birthmark to my shoulder to match the one Tracy had. I looked like an Egyptian mummy with all my bandages on, coming out of the operating room. But when the day came to remove them, 
I was amazed. Just a little touch-up could make me look this incredible. I twirled around in front of the mirror in one of Tracy's glitzy dresses and just smiled. We were totally going to pull this off. Tracy was even more excited than me. She turned to me and said, Ready for the family party? Oh, wow. So my first mission had arrived already. I nervously looked at Tracy, and she just giggled and said, Oh, don't be nervous. It's just my cousin's baby's first birthday party. No big deal. Although, Thomas's whole family will be there. That's the family I'm meant to marry into. Okay, now I was even more worried. Tracy told me to simply do what I learned in the classes. As for Thomas, she instructed me to just ignore him, as that's what she usually did. He was used to the cold shoulder. <laughs> well, the moment I arrived at the party, I was already so overwhelmed. I couldn't believe my eyes. Her cousin's house was basically a palace with butlers and a grand staircase as you entered, just like in the movies. I almost had to pinch myself that I was even there. As I walked in, one of the butlers asked me to follow him through to the banquet hall. A banquet hall? How insane! There were crystal chandeliers hanging from every part of the ceiling, and the room looked like it was literally made from gold. I noticed Tracy's dad standing in the middle of the room with a young couple and a baby. That would be Tracy's cousin, and the baby was obviously the reason this insane party had been thrown. I took a deep breath, gathered myself, and walked towards them in the way my etiquette teacher had taught me. I greeted them casually, and it seemed no one sensed anything weird. Not even Tracy's dad. However, I was still afraid someone would realize. So I grabbed a glass of wine and went to stand in the corner just to be safe. While I was fiddling with the glass and trying not to make eye contact with anyone, a guy came up to me and clinked my glass. Oh boy! The coolest, most handsome guy ever was standing there grinning at me. I smiled back at him politely, trying not to blush. And then I realized, wasn't he Thomas and Tracy, the happy couple? Suddenly, I heard Tracy's dad from a few feet away, speaking towards us. You two look exquisite together. Be good to him now, Tracy, won't you? Yep, it's Thomas, the fiancé that Tracy doesn't like at all. Okay, so I need to act cold towards him, otherwise I'll ruin everything for Tracy. But heck... He was just so good looking. I quickly walked away towards the dessert table and started stuffing my face with some almond cookies, anything to distract myself from Thomas. As I picked up a third one, I heard Thomas scream, and the next moment he was running over to me shouting, Tracy, put it down! There are nuts in those! I dropped the cookie in shock. Right. I was supposed to be allergic to these delicious snacks. Totally forgot that. Gosh, I turned around to see all eyes were on me. This was a disaster. I was like a deer in the headlights. Didn't know what else to do. I pretended to faint. Thomas immediately carried me somewhere while others called the family doctor. I only took a peek when I felt like I was let down on a bed. And wow, even their guest room is gorgeous. Anyway, the doctor did some quick checkup and said I was okay. Well, obviously. Then Thomas rushed over, holding my hand and kept saying, thank God you're okay, baby. Really? How come Tracy didn't like him? He was so sweet. He was looking at me so lovingly. Wait, at Tracy, actually. Oh boy, this was getting weird. Guess I have started off this mission on the wrong foot. But having that first incident actually helped me become more careful, so I've been getting better and better at playing Tracy. I was like a secret agent that would be summoned by duty at any sec. Sometimes you'd find me as a princess, other times I'd be waiting tables. My life was getting busier, but much more fun in some senses. Then one day, Tracy suddenly appeared at my door, looking all loved up. How strange it was. Usually she only contacted me over the phone. Then she said, Kathy, I have a big mission for you. As she sat down, she put a bulging envelope on the table and said, Kathy, sweetie, I need a big favor this time. So here's the thing. Me and Arnold are going to Asia for a month, and, um, 
I was wondering if you could maybe move into my house and cover for me? I was shocked. A month? Um, that's quite a long time. I mean, surely I'll get caught. Oh, I'm not sure, Tracy. I tried to avoid her eye contact, but she kept begging and looking like she was about to cry. Oh, God. What should I do? Guys, please give me some advice. And stay tuned. I'll be back with part two to tell you how things go down. <sighs> Why do I have uneasy feelings about all this? Hey guys, Adeline here, again. I'm going to tell you how my story ends. Here's a quick refresher for you. I love Ryan, but let's just say it's complicated. I found out that his father played a part in my father's bankruptcy, which led to his suicide. I couldn't talk this through with Ryan as he went off the radar, only to reappear when I was hugging my friend Junsu in the park, which I was only doing because I was upset about him. Anyway, Ryan got the wrong idea and stormed off. The following morning, I woke up with the worst headache ever and felt dreadful. I tried messaging and calling Ryan, but he didn't answer or reply, and he seemed to have disappeared off all social media. I went to his old house and asked his neighbors, but none of them knew where his family were. I also asked his close friend, and he told me that all he knew was that Ryan had transferred to another college in Canada. Two years passed, and I didn't hear anything from Ryan, yet he was never far from my thoughts. I hung out with Junsu more often. I found him great fun to be around, but there was one downside. I knew he was in love with me. On three different occasions, he told me so, and on each occasion, I felt super awkward turning him down. I believed Junsu was a good person, but then something happened to ruin our friendship forever. One night, Junsu and I went to a bar in town. We both got a little drunk, and he kept on slurring out how much he loved me. I didn't want to hurt his feelings, so I politely told him I cared about him, but just as a friend. Junsu insisted on walking me home. When we got back, I felt tired and just wanted to go inside and sleep. So I thanked him and was about to go inside when he grabbed my arm and pulled me back. I told him to let go, but he shouted at me, Why not me? You know that I really love you. What did he have that I didn't? Then he leaned to kiss me. I pushed him off me, but then he didn't seem to get the hint. Instead, he pushed me into the wall and tried to unbutton my shirt. I shouted, no, I don't love you and I never will. Then I shoved him off me. I ran inside and quickly locked the door. That night, Junsu was standing outside the dormitory, waiting until early morning to see me, but I was determined not to see him. Since then, Junsu tried apologizing to me, but I just didn't feel safe around him anymore. We still worked together, so I was polite to him, but we no longer hung out with each other. Then one evening, I went to my shift at work, and my boss told me Junsu had left. I never saw him again after that. After the incidents with Ryan and Junsu, I just couldn't deal with any more drama. I put all my focus into my studies. My hard work paid off as I finished four years of college with a first-class bachelor's degree and received a job offer to be an assistant director in a reputable steel manufacturing company. I devoted myself entirely to working. After half of a year, my position was strengthened and my boss trusted in me. As a result, in most of his important appointments, he always let me accompany him. Our company was planning to build another manufacturing factory, and we were trying to find a construction contractor, so I went with my boss to meet potential contractors at a luxury restaurant. I almost fainted when the bosses of the company came in. It was Ryan and his father. Ryan was so surprised that he was speechless. Seeing that, my boss asked, uh... Are you acquaintances? Ryan's father didn't seem to recognize me because it had been a few years, and I'd never had much interaction with him. Before I could react, Ryan said, No, I don't know her. Although his comment hurt, I was professional, so I quickly regained my composure and we greeted each other like we were meeting for the first time. He'd changed so much. Now he was quite the dashing businessman. I wondered if he had a model-like girlfriend to go with his shiny new life. I found it hard to act naturally around him. I kept stuttering out my words, and my palms were sweaty. Worse still, he seemed completely unfazed. At our dinner, we discussed our job. While Ryan's dad seemed to be desperate to collaborate, my boss didn't show much interest in them. I knew this was because we also had another contractor offering a lower bid. 
Before we left, I went to the restroom, and before opening the door, I heard voices coming out from the hallway. It was Ryan and his father talking to each other. If we don't get this contract, we're finished. I know, Dad. I try my best to win this contract, Ryan firmly said. Okay, so perhaps his life wasn't so perfect after all. At that moment, the thought of helping them popped into my head, but then I thought again. Ryan's dad had ruined my father's company to the point of bankruptcy. Thanks to him, I no longer had my dad here. So if their company was in trouble now, it was just retribution, right? That night, I struggled a lot to process all this in my mind. Finally, I decided to leave that feud behind and find a way to help them. I hated what Ryan's father did to my family, but I wasn't like him. I was a good person, and I knew Ryan was too. I loved him and wanted to help him. I stayed awake for several nights and collected all the data to help prove Ryan's company's potentiality. I also gathered evidence of how, on a previous job, the other contractor reduced their raw materials, and this led to a decrease in the quality of the construction of their project. I completed the entire set of documents right before the day my boss planned to make an appointment with the other contractor. Fortunately, after listening to my presentation, my boss changed his mind and decided to choose Ryan's company to carry out the project. On the day our company signed the contract, Ryan was still cold toward me. He would never know that I helped bring this contract to his company. But no problem. I just needed closure so that I could finally put all the hurt behind me and move forward with my life. One day, when I came home from work because I was too lazy to drive, I took the bus, which Ryan and I used to take together. As soon as I stepped onto it, I gasped. In the last row, where we always used to sit together, Ryan was there, napping with his earphones in. I plucked up the courage to sit next to him. He woke up and looked at me. Needless to say, he seemed surprised. It was about time I told him everything. So I asked him to go for a walk in the park with me. He gave a nod of his head, and we walked there in silence. I told Ryan the truth, from how I found out that his father's ruthless business deals bankrupted my father and resulted in him taking his own life. Then I told him about Junsu and how the time he spotted us together, he'd just been comforting me as I was so upset on seeing that his house was for sale. After hearing everything, Ryan hugged me. We stayed like that, hugging and crying for a long time. Neither of us wanted to let the other go. It turned out that in the last two years, Ryan's family company had gone through a hard time and was on the verge of bankruptcy. So his father had to sell his house and then their family moved to Canada to save the company at the last branch which his brother managed. They planned to settle there too, but Ryan still wanted to go back to the US because he still loved me. The day he came back, he saw me with Junsu and presumed I'd never loved him if I could move on so easily. Angry, he'd blocked me out of his life and moved straight to Canada. He finished college there and helped manage the company with his father and brother. Recently, his company met another difficult patch, which they would now get through thanks to the contract. Getting the contract feels like a miracle, he said, but the biggest miracle of all is reuniting with you. After that, we decided that we would not let the past story of our parents affect our happiness. We loved each other and our families would just have to find a way to accept it. With Ryan's support, I found the courage to go to his house for dinner and meet his father. After talking for a while, I mentioned my father's name, which left Ryan's dad looking surprised. It turned out that my father's death wasn't down to him. Instead, there was a third person who interfered in the business between them, and he was the one who caused my father to die of hopelessness. I cried out in relief. For so long, I'd thought the man I love had a monster for a father. Finding out that this wasn't the case was so overwhelming. Ryan's father promised to make it up to me, and he offered me an amazing job in his company. Although flattered, my current job was going very well, and maybe in my position I could help them more in the upcoming project. As for Ryan and I, now there are no more barriers separating our love. We can finally be together, and there's no way I'm ever losing him again. I'm also doing so well in my career that I'm able to send my mom money to help with the bills. One day, I fully intend to rebuild my father's business empire, but for now, I hope he's looking down on me and feeling proud of all I've achieved. The road to true love isn't always easy, but it all worked out for me and Ryan in the end. It goes to show that sometimes you should never give up on love, and you should never presume something is as bad as it first seems, as this isn't always the case. Trust me, I can vouch for that.